Imagine a world with no cold calling. A world where companies don't sell your data to other companies who want to pester you. At G4 Claims, we don't cold call and we don't buy a single lead from data companies. Oh, and if you're due any compensation from your car accident, you pay nothing to us at all. For full accident management support, including motor replacement, repairs and personal injury compensation claims, just search G4 Claims today for help the way you want it. Hi and welcome to this week's episode of the DW Podcast. Firstly, before we go any further, I would just like to thank everyone who has listened to the podcast in 2020. I have grown my listenership, you know, by a fantastic amount. It's unbelievable to see how much that has increased, not only here in Scotland and the UK, but also across the world. Uh, and I suppose that's down to having guests, you know, from, from all over the world as well. If this is your first podcast that you've listened to, please go back and listen to some previous episodes. I'm sure there'll be some in there that you enjoy. Uh, and if you can, please like, subscribe, and even give us a little five-star review if you listen to it on a podcast app. First interview here is with Lana Cleland, who is a Scottish international women's football player who plays out in Florence for Fiorentina. Lana's got a great story behind her, and I think it's fantastic to see players go to a foreign country to pursue their career, something that I think British players often fall behind on. I hope you enjoy this episode of the podcast, uh, and first up, here's my chat with Lana. Hi and welcome to this week's episode of the DW Podcast. I'm joined by Scottish international Lana Cleland. Hello. Thanks very much for uh, having us in Florence, firstly. Mm-hmm. Thank yous. How are you getting on? It's good. The weather's a little bit terrible right now, but... Oh, terrible? This is brilliant. We, we came from Scotland, as you know, and it's like... <laughs> no, I feel as if we're in a, a tropical country. We're used to 30 degrees, so Aye. it's a little bit cold. I was just talking before you came on there, and it's been six years or so you've been in Italy now, so... Yep, six years coming up. Um, unbelievable. I was actually talking to my family about it not that long ago, how quick the time's passed. It's, it's unbelievable. It feels like you're a, a native. I feel part Italian, you know. <laughs> it's funny because we've got like a group of foreigners in the team and the Italians don't class me as a foreigner anymore. They Honestly, class yeah. me as an Italian. So. What was it like when you first moved out? Because obviously before you came out, you played for Rangers uh, and Spartans. And then I think like a lot of the girls in the Scotland team tend to go down to like, Arsenal, your Chelsea's mm-hmm. and down south. But... Obviously moving out to Italy must have been a big change for you, a big decision. Yeah, it was something different. Um, it just kind of popped up at a good time for me. I was looking for game time and the Scottish season came to an end. So I jumped at the chance. I thought it was only going to be five months um, and experience, learn a different side of football. Um, and yeah, five months turned into six years. So That's crazy, eh? What was, what was your experience like when you first came out? Because you obviously couldn't speak the, the language and now you're yeah, a, no, an actual. Uh, five months in Barry was difficult. Um, they're different down there compared okay. to the rest of Italy. So it's very much in the south, isn't it, right at the bottom? Yeah, it's very much so. Um, so yeah, it was hard. Um, learned a little bit of the language, but not very much. Um, I had quite a few foreigners in the team, so that helped a little bit. Um, but football, football's football, so on the pitch, um, I loved every single minute of it. Um, getting back playing and scoring goals, so it was brilliant. I mean, I, I love the story, you know it very well, about Rose Riley when she came mm. over. So obviously you weren't the first Scottish uh-huh. women to come out to Italy and play football. Yeah, exactly. For those that don't know, she obviously came what, was back in the 70s, oh, 70s, 80s, yeah. and signed for AC Milan and won the World Cup for mm. Italy. But was that ever in your mind, thinking, did you know much about that before no, you came so out? No, so when I came out to Italy, I didn't have a clue about it, which right. is actually really sad. Um, it was an, actually a journalist down in Barry that told me about it. Right. Um, and I think she moved to the south as well, Yeah, she? so yeah. from there on I went... Um, I, I, studied a little bit more of the story and what she achieved over here was absolutely unbelievable so yeah. I'm glad now today it's getting more recognition and certainly um, I think that's, that's a good point that you make because I feel that you know women's football in general in more recent years it's been getting the recognition it deserves but mm-hmm. I think it's taking its time isn't it certainly yeah. in the UK maybe not so much over here yeah yeah it's taking its time but it's growing every single year I mean I think I look back on the six years that I've been here how much it's grown Italian football so to think back maybe 10 years 20 years ago it's unbelievable um, even if I look back now like Ten years ago, so I was at Rangers, um, and the difference from then to now, the girls being professional is unbelievable. But it's still got a lot, a lot, a lot further to go. But it's definitely on the right path. What was it like when you were you were growing up in Perth and, and playing football in the early days? Was it straightforward, or was it? No, it was difficult. I mean, all I ever knew was to play with the boys. Um, sure. I didn't know other girls that played football. So back then, it was I just felt kind of special um, that I was the only one. Um, but no, it was great fun back, back then, playing always with your friends after school or and then I joined up with the local boys team as well, so it was great fun. Brilliant, good. And then obviously you've broke into the, the Scottish national team as well. You've been a, 
a mainstay there since you're old enough, I suppose. It's, you've played at every level as well. Must be pretty special to represent your country. Yeah, I mean, growing up, it was never it was never there um, to see. So it wasn't as if it was a an aim because it wasn't it wasn't there for us yeah. to see. But um, since I've been in the setup, it's knowing that the, the A squad was there. It was. It was definitely a dream to play there and, and to be there for such a long time and to have gone to the European Championships and then the World Cup, it's definitely... What was that like? There was so much media attention around <laughs> the World Cup as well, you know, and it just seemed like a great experience from the outside looking in. Yeah, the World Cup was unbelievable. Um, obviously after it, you, you put aside what, maybe the disappointments of, of certain games and, and things maybe personally, but the overall experience for us, Scotland as a nation, um, for women's football going forward, um, is absolutely brilliant. To show these young girls that that is the aim and that you can be there and you can play on the biggest stage in the world. I think it's, it's absolutely incredible. So we'll, we'll go back to when you, you first came and you played for Barry and you, before we were recording, you, know, you said you're here for, it's going to be five, six months and then you were, you were heading home. What, what was the change? What made you stay? Um, I was heading back to go to Spartans and then uh, two teams actually came in from me at the end of that season um, and I thought long and hard about it because I'm quite a home person, sure. uh, if anybody that knows me, um, really close to my family. So it was a big decision to make but I felt that the football out here suited me as a player. Sure. Um, so the team that came after me, Tavanyako, they were one of the biggest teams out here at the time. Um, had such great names in Italian football. So I thought, you know what, I'll sign for a year, see what it's like. If I can deal with not being like being far from home, then sure. then okay. Um, and yeah, exactly, it was it was brilliant. And I remember watching uh, the feature that you done on a view from the terrace in BBC Scotland, mm -hmm. and you mentioned that it wasn't really until you went to. Tavanyako that you started learning the language and yeah, exactly. you know, feeling that you were at home was... Yeah, when I went to Tavanyako, hardly any of the girls spoke English, very few, um, and broken English, so it was really, really hard. Um, Italians, they don't they don't expect, but they appreciate if you learn the language, sure. um, and they'll help you as much as they can, so the girls up there were absolutely brilliant with me, they helped me on a daily basis um, to learn the language, and fortunate enough that I didn't have to go to school, that is literally how I learned so it you didn't from. do any lessons didn't at all? didn't do any lessons. Um, were you nervous at first, like... Do you know, I think it's having the ability to say, OK, I, I'm going to get things wrong. Um, I think that was the scariest part. I didn't want to get things wrong. So you have to accept that it's part of the language. It's a difficult language. Um, there's lots of grammar, isn't there? There's lots so of much, grammar. So much compared to ours. I tried to do it at school. I'd done my higher Italian yeah. for God, 15 years ago or something. Any time I go back to it, it's just so challenging, you know. It's so, so hard. I mean, I probably still get things wrong on a daily basis, but... Sure. Um, Can you write it as well? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? right, listen, yeah. That's amazing. I know. And uh, what's the banter like about the dressing rooms here? Because is it different for Scotland or is it quite similar? Or uh, yeah, the... I don't think there's any banter like Scotland, to <laughs> no, be fair. No, that's so true. <laughs> um, it must be such a relief when you're going away for the World Cup or the national games to get back home. And yeah, it's a, funny when I take some of my friends back home, yeah. Um, the banter's a bit different, but... No, we still have a great laugh here um, in the changing room and about the girls are brilliant. So that's amazing. And what about the top scorer in the Serie A? I know. <laughs> <laughs> that must be amazing. I mean, from any for Scotland, be it male football, women's football, to come to Italy, you know, and be top scorer in the league, it must be amazing. Yeah, it's not ever anything that I ever put my mind to to do. Um, the season just kind of went like that. Uh, every single game, I was scoring goals, and then somebody brought up the Rose Riley. Um, story again of that uh, because there's only ever been four foreigners to win the golden boot in oh, Serie A, really? right, okay. and me, Rose Riley, and then two Danish girls. That's amazing. So eh? yeah, to be on the same page as her is pretty special. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but you also won the the cup with Savinjaco as well. There was two cups. No, 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 no. That was the year before that year they before. won. The, the year before I went, they won the cup, the Coppa Italia. Yeah, but for Fiorentina, when you came here, you won the cup. We and won didn't the win, cup. Yeah, and lost out in the final with the other one. Cup Italia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Since Juventus has came along, it's been it's been hard. So, so they've only recently got a way these. Yeah, out. only yeah. the last three years uh, they've came on the scene. So sure. And from Tavan, yeah, I got to come here. I mean, look at a stadium. It's I know. A massive club. What was it like telling your friends and family back home? You know, I'm going to Fiorentina because for me, I used to be a huge fan of Italian football in the 90s, and yeah. I think Fiorentina were always one of the teams that are instantly recognisable from people outside the country as well, you know? Yeah, I think even on a personal level, Florence, off the pitch, is an unbelievable city. Anybody that's not been really needs to come and see. You um, can be their tour guide if anyone's Yeah, exactly. It's a very, very special city. Um, so to be able to live here and, and this be my home um, is really special. And then, yeah, Fiorentina, um, they've had some players been on this pitch, so um, it's really an honour to be here and to have played on the pitch and, and to be a part of this club. Totally. I feel that, you know, what a 
prefer a lot about Italian football is I think that the, the women's game is so much more respected over here than it is in the UK in terms of the supporters support the women's team, the youth team, you know, everyone. And I, I think that would be more replicated across the, the UK. I personally don't feel that some of the the men's teams in Scotland or in England, they don't put enough focus on their women's teams as well. Yeah, I think um, for the fans, I think Italians love football. So whether it be the women's team or the men's team that they're going to watch, they're coming to watch and they're shouting the same. Um, they want their city and their club to win. So yeah. um, for that aspect, it's much better. Uh, I think it's going back in the UK. Yeah. I mean, if I go back home and watch some games, like when I used to be there, it was just parents. Um, now there is some people that come and watch it. So it's definitely on the right path here. Definitely. Florence is a city then. What, what's your highlights? I mean, you says it's you know great and we need to visit. Everything. There's yeah. not one particular thing. There's one place, I don't know if you've ever been, Piazzale Michelangelo. Right, okay. It, it, looks, right squares, it so. looks right across. Oh, is no, it the vantage right point? Up. Yep, it yeah, looks yeah. right across the city. Um, right. I live near there, so sure. I do that road all the time and it's just it's special. And imagine like walking about the city centre and people recognise you as well who playing football. It must be pretty special. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's something that you get used to. As much as the women's the women's game keeps growing, it's just something that, that comes part and parcel with it. So um, you get used to it. But it's, it's I nice. imagine one of the challenges, Lana, is you know you spoke before again we were recording and says that you're out here yourself. Do you ever get homesick? Or? You know, in the last couple of years, I was actually there's a Swedish girl on my team, and she's exactly the same. I think the last couple of years, it's that's gone. Yeah. Um, to start with, it was hard. It was I was going home. Maybe when I had three days off, I would go home. Yeah. Now I don't. Um, Florence has basically became became my home, so um, definitely happy out here. Um, parents, family, and friends come and come and visit as much as they can. Sure. Um, but no, definitely. What's it like for a night out then? If you do you go out often, with your teammates? Or? No, do you know what? Italian life's not really like that. It's more you go out for dinner together. You maybe go out for one drink. It's it's not kind of the social life that it is back in the UK. Of course. Um, I think that's the culture as a whole, though, isn't it? It's probably a sad indictment. It's exactly UK culture it. that it's if you're going out, it's to. <laughs> you know what I mean? um, no, yeah, like I said, it's more you maybe go out for one drink and then you go out for dinner. It's Italians are they love their food, don't they? So yeah, totally. um, yeah it's it's special, it's different, um, but it's I really do love. love We've the culture. been really struggling the past few nights when we've been going out for dinner. It's like we get a pass that start and then they're wanting you to get a second course, and it's like another main course. So it's like can you keep up with it? <laughs> you get used to it. Trust me. <laughs> it's like five courses throughout the night. We're like, oh my goodness, I'm, yeah. I know I'm fat, but I'm not that fat. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what's the restaurants that you'd recommend if there's anywhere for people oh. to go in Florence? Or? I'm going to say Brindaloni. Um, it's right in the centre. Um, the famous Fiorentina steak. Okay, it's so brilliant, eh? That's amazing. Unbelievable. What, what are you thinking about the season ahead then? What have you got to look forward to? What's the ambitions as well? Yeah, as Fiorentina, we're looking, we're looking to go and get the title. Um, we've got a great squad this season. Um, we want to be challenging Juventus. We've dropped at the last, the last peg, the last couple of seasons behind them, um, one point, two points. So um, we're definitely looking to get back on track and get back up there with them. Um, personally, I obviously came back from a long-term injury, so I'm um, just delighted to get back on the pitch and try and get as many minutes and just help the team as much as I can this season. Um, but yeah, it seems like Juventus are almost the team to beat, you know, and they have been for many years. Are they, are they plowing a lot of money into it? Are they? Yep, that's what they do. Um, yeah, they came in last minute and, and created this team and they've basically got 80% of the national team in that team. Um, so yeah, they've done well. Um, but like I said, our team this season is really, really strong, so we're looking to go and challenge them. Would you ever move back like, to play in Scotland or England? Maybe later in your career, you obviously get still get mm. a long time ahead of you, you know. It's, um, it's something that I get asked more and more um, as the time goes on. I mean, Scotland will always be home. Um, Potentially, I don't know. Just to just depends really what happens um, with my career. But like I said, right now I'm happily in it, happily in it at least. Brilliant. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much for, for having us here and no, you know, thank and, and for uh, letting us come into this amazing stadium and giving your time. So no problem. much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed that. There. Uh, that was Lana Cleland playing out in Fiorentina. Uh, up next we have Harvey Sinclair, who is also a young Scottish international football player, played for Scotland at youth level, came through the ranks at Chelsea and is now in Venice playing for Venezia FC. Uh, hi and welcome to this week's episode of the DW Podcast. I am joined by Venice player, Alvis and Claire. Thanks very much for giving us your time. Yeah, no problem. It's a lovely place as well in here, eh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's really nice. What's, uh, what's it been like living in Venice for the past two years now? You know? uh, yeah, about a year, a year and a half. Um, it's been really, really good. 
Uh, I've really enjoyed it here and um, I'm just ready to kick on this season. And just as we're recording this, it's uh, just about to start the season, your yeah. first game tomorrow? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got our first league game tomorrow against uh, newly promoted Vincenzo. And um, hopefully we can get a result because we've been working hard, so we're looking forward to tomorrow. It's a local derby, it might be a, a bit different because there's no fans there, but yeah. I'm sure the importance is still there with him. Yeah, definitely. The, the Ultras yesterday came to the to the training ground just to do their um, like usual good luck before the season. and. Um, what was that like? Obviously, yeah, it's expensive. it's quite intense. Um, <laughs> they um, they just wish us good luck, and they just want us to make sure at the end of the game that our, our shirts are dripping with sweat and really work hard and give everything for for the club. And do you have to speak to them at the training ground? Then how does how does that work? Yeah, the like the the main the main man for the the ultras will will have his will have his say, and then we listen and. Um, take what he says on board and just give everything for, uh, for, the, for the club. It's really interesting because it must be so different from what you're, you're used to. Yeah, in your team. yeah definitely. Um, there's definitely a, a connection with the fans here because it's, it's quite a, quite a cl- close-knit, close-knit club. And yeah, it's, it's really interesting. What did you know about the club and the, the place before you came? Because I think when I think of it, you just think of gondolas and, and yeah. what other things. Yeah, definitely. I didn't... Um, I didn't know much until I until I really researched it. And I came here and um, listened to the listened to what their their, their project was and stuff. And um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a big project. Well, I mean, from from a player, you know, who's at Chelsea since six years old, it must yeah. have been a big change for you. You were offered yeah. a contract at Chelsea, yeah. Well, so it must have been a big step. And I, I look at players like yourself and Liam Henderson. Yeah. I think go on, that's brilliant. It's great to yeah. see. Yeah, definitely. It was a it was a massive decision for me leaving a, leaving such a such a great club at, at Chelsea and um, turning the contract down is is a yeah it was a massive decision for me. But I had to I had to make a decision um, and um, I'm here now and I can only look 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 towards the look towards the future. And uh, but before you came, you know. You had the great time at Chelsea. You were playing under twenty three yeah. Champions League, scoring against Real Madrid. And yeah, definitely. It was a a lot of a lot of great memories. Um, playing with my friends and it was a it was a great time. But I felt I felt I was ready for the step up for for men's football. And I think coming abroad, it, it it's made me grow as a person and as a player. And, um, I feel like I'm ready for anything now. What do a club like Venice do for? Players like yourself that you know you've came here, you don't know the language. Yeah. And before we were recording, we were in the car and you were telling us you know, it's, it's a very international club. There's players yeah. from Holland, and Iceland, and yeah. across the world. I think um, they they have a vision for being a, an international club. They have a massive project, and um, like now, as you see, they've signed a lot of uh, foreign players. So um, it's a it's a really exciting time for for the club. I think. What do you, what's the language in the dressing room? Still Italian then, of course? Yeah, the, it's mainly Italian. Um, uh, but now, obviously, there's a few few new lads and uh, there's a bit of English speaking, but mainly, mainly Italian, so yeah. Uh, yeah, so what was it like when you came? Obviously, I spoke to Lana and she was saying that she didn't do any Italian lessons. You know, she picked yeah. it up by listening to her, her friends in the dressing room and her fellow players. Yeah, yeah, I think it was a bit like that when I when I first came. Um, I was just focused on the football, and I just and then I just I I think it was just a matter of just listening to it every day, the the same words, and just um, it just sunk in, and I know pretty much. All the words that uh, are at the training ground, and um, yeah, I still need to 
Same to continue working on the working on the language. I think it's easier to, to listen rather than speak. Yeah. There must be words that are quite similar as well. Yeah, it? yeah, definitely. There's definitely words that are similar to English. But um I think just listening to it all the time, the radio, the television, you, you seem to pick it up quite well. What's it like living here? Because Venice in itself is yeah. also we're just outside the menstrual at the moment. Yeah, it's yeah. A, such a unique place, isn't it? Yeah, it's very um, it's very different to what I'm used to. I'm quite uh, I come from London, which is quite hustly and bustly, it's like quite city, a lot of uh, a lot of people. But here's a bit uh, a bit quieter, a bit more green. And um, yeah, when you go to when you go to Venice, it's completely different. So it's just a new experience, new culture. Talk us through a, a match day in Venice because we've touched on the ultras, but yeah. something that I find really interesting is you know, you've only got a boat to train yeah. or it's so we drive to like um, a place called San Giuliano and we leave our cars there and um, we get like a, a big boat and we go go past Venice and the 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 stadium is just on the other side so we get a boat there it takes about thirty minutes and yeah and does it go through the whole city it kind of goes around it because it's like kind of like a street for the for the Laguna so. Okay. Kind of make your round, way around Venice and then go around and it comes into the to the stadium. And the fans are they waving from the side of the canals? Can they see you? Is it? Uh, their boat comes round. It goes round the other side, so they come through right. through a different section. But yeah, we definitely um, you can definitely hear them singing. And so you get to the, the stadium with about an hour or two before kickoff. Yeah. What's, what's the build up like? Because the fans must be in there early as well, and it yeah. sounds like they're really. They basically tell you what, what you have to do, you know, to sweat till the end. Or yeah, so. yeah, definitely. It's um it's definitely very, very passionate. We we eat in uh Mestre and then we go to the uh San Giuliano and then we go to the stadium and then uh yeah, and you can hit the fans and then the usual warm up and then the game will start. You've uh, you were went out on one last year to yeah. to Kobama. How, yeah. how was that experience? Yeah, it was a. Uh, it was a different one. It was difficult um, coming from a different style of style of football uh, from Italy, and um, then going straight into it. It was a uh, it was difficult and a few niggly injuries, and um, but yeah, it was some good experiences and some not so. But um, it's probably yeah, it was a good physical back home as well. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely very very physical. Um, it's non stop, and it's just a. It's a battle every game, so yeah. Was it Alessio that brought you to Kilmarnock? Yeah, it was Alessio that um, brought me into Kilmarnock, yeah. How, was there an Italian connection there because you were playing out here? Or? Yeah, I think he remembered me from the, the days at the 23s at Chelsea because he was there with Conte. And I was trained a few times with them and um, I think he watched a few games and yeah, that just managed to... Yeah, he managed to bring me there. What did you feel of the Italian influence in the Scottish dressing room was like? Was it? I get the impression from the outside looking in, especially when there was a lot of talk in the press as well. It was almost yeah. like the, the Scottish players or the more senior players, yeah. in my opinion, thought they knew better, you know, and that's not yeah. like always the case. Yeah, it was. Um, they had a. It was a. It was a. I don't know how to explain, but it was a. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Yeah. Yeah. Who was the characters in, in that dressing room? There was a lot of um, a lot of older players, a lot of senior players. Um, Alex Bruce, Gary Dicker. They're in their thirties, so they had a. They're quite. I don't. It's a different culture as well. Like um, in Scotland with the players and and stuff, but yeah, it was a, it was a different experience. I should say. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And Alex Bruce must be. Yeah, he's, he's quite, yeah, he's quite vocal in the dressing room as well. Yeah, he's quite funny. He's got a lot of experience as a player. He's, he's played at the top Premier League, so to see him training every day and his his mentality, you just got to learn from him. You made your debut at Celtic Park. It yeah. must have been a great experience as well. Yeah, it was it was incredible. Really, in front of a full stadium. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. Unfortunately, about the result was great, but. Yeah, it's a three one or three. Yeah, three one. Yeah. We missed the penalty, so it could have been three two. But it was, it was a 
was a good experience. Yeah. What was your thoughts of the, the fans and Celtic? And how did that compare to the, the fans here in Italy? Yeah, definitely. The, they have their section where they where they sing a lot. So yeah, the, I could just see I could just see like yeah. green <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> so um, yeah, incredible. Probably the best stadium yeah. I've played. Yeah. And I suppose once you get that taste, the point in front of sixty thousand yeah. makes you want hungry for more. Yeah, it's like a it's like an addiction. You just you just want more. You want that. You want that high. You want to keep keep playing again. Coming back to Venice, then it's what's the, the plans for this season going forward? Are you? So um, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay here this season, I think, and um, fight for my place and uh, try and be a starter week in week out. So yeah. Touched on earlier, it does seem like the club have got you know a real vision for the yeah. really want to go. It's the American owners, and yeah. I've noticed certainly in the media and online there's been a lot of the kit release, for example, yeah, uh, for yeah. the new shots. Sort of crackers. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like they know where they're going and they're, they're pretty, you know, out there. Yeah, yeah. They definitely um, they have a big vision for the club and the owners are really involved. And the new sporting director Paolo Poggi and Mattia, they're both Venetian, so they've got um, they've got good good hearts and they really want to do well for the club. So I think everyone's pushing in the right direction. These guys come into the dressing room and. Four matches or how, how hands on are they? What do you, what do you mean by that? Uh, yeah, they're very close to the players. Like uh, the coach is a bit different here. They're quite they're quite close to the team. Like they're always at the training ground, and um, they just want they want the best for the team and try and win every game. What do you do after training then? Because uh, as I said, you know people think of art galleries and gondolas, but yeah. I suppose it's not really like that. It's yeah, for me, I just it's just a simple, very simple life. I just go to sleep. I wake up and. Then I go to training and then go home and train and just always training. And uh, you've been involved with the, the Scotland under 21 set yeah. as well. How's, how's that yeah. experience been? I suppose people listening will hear your accent and think, yeah. this boy's from London, what's going on? So is that your, your mother's Scottish? Yeah, my mum my mom's was born in Edinburgh. Uh, she was born in Scotland. And then her mum was Scottish. And then my dad's uh, grandparents were Scottish, so I've got a lot of uh, Scottish blood in me. So. Yeah, I definitely, definitely feel I feel Scottish. So, um, and yeah, I've been been away with the national team from from an early age, um, fifteen up till twenty one. So, how was the decision to make when when Scotland come calling? Were you thinking, I don't know, I might wait and see if I get into the England team? I mean, no, it was it was very easy. They 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 showed that they really wanted me, and yeah, I don't think you can turn an opportunity like that down. I'm very proud to play for Scotland, so yeah, it was a it was a no brainer for me. That's brilliant. Who was your was it Malcolm McKay? Uh, uh, Scott Gamble. Scott Gamble. Scott Gamble. Um, Ricky Ricky Spurrier. That's right, yeah. yeah. And yeah, Malcolm as well. Malky. How's the influence been on you coming over here? I'm sure I read an interview previously. You know, you spoke to yeah. the coaches at Chelsea, and yeah, yeah, and also your coaches in Scotland for some advice. Yeah, I spoke with uh, I spoke with a few people about this decision, and um, yeah, I spoke with Malcolm. Scott Gamble and they helped me a lot about um, coming here. So, so yeah, they've been they've helped me a lot. So I'm really grateful for that. It'd be very rude of you know to ask about Billy Gilmore since he's sort of in Scotland. He's yeah, some yeah. talent, eh? Yeah, he's a he's a great player. I've got, I've got no bad words to say about him. He's a, he's definitely a talent and he loves the game and every bit of success he gets, he, he deserves it. So I think he's been strong on it in the Premier League. To be yeah, honest, when he's, he's, he's been given that chance. Yeah. It's, it's really, I'm really happy to see him do well because he's such a good lad and he loves the game and yeah, I'm just happy for every time he does well. Who else in, in your youth teams at Chelsea would you say that people should be looking out for or are you really enjoying playing with? Uh, I think uh, Reese James, uh, Mason, Mason Mount, um, Callum as well. Um, yeah, I'm, I really like the fact that they, they all play and it's good to see uh, Chelsea Chelsea players like Chelsea homegrown players playing in the first team because over the years there it's been a lot of um, they can just go and buy any player they want so it's nice to see a uh, real Chelsea uh, like uh, academy players there. Well, I suppose that must kind of be your influence as well when you're thinking about going to other teams. Obviously, recently Chelsea had the transfer embargo, yeah. so a lot of young boys have been given the chance. But yeah, yeah. you were playing at a great level for Chelsea for so many years, but yeah. you must see all these. 
where I was coming from abroad and getting a chance before people that are potentially in the youth team that yeah, have got yeah. that talent. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think they've showed it last season. Um, they got top four, which is which is a great achievement for them. And yeah, it's really nice to see to see um, players that you've played with uh, for so long and you're so close with them can only make you make you want to push on and inspire you. I would imagine that Frank Lampard's probably changed the culture a bit as well. Yeah, definitely. He, um, it's really good that he's. He's given them an opportunity and you can see that they've taken it and they've shown that they can play at that level. So it's really positive for, for Chelsea's future. Before you came here or even since you've been there, was there many other clubs looking at you? I heard previously that Steven Gerrard was interested in Rangers. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but um, I think that's just uh, rumours. But yeah, it was, a, it was a bit of a snowball effect coming here. It was, it was more of an idea and then negotiations and just here now, so I'm just ready to ready to crack on really. And it's first game tomorrow, so we're wishing you yeah. all the best and we'll keep my eye on you. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully we can uh, get a good result and start the season off well and um it'll be a bit different when there's no fans there, but it'll be a new experience. But um uh, I'll be ready and the team will be ready to give a hundred percent for for the club. Brilliant. Hope you do well this season. Yeah. Maybe promotion in the Serie A. Hopefully we'll take it um we'll take it game by game, training by training, but um we've got a good uh, fresh young group and some experience in there as well. It's a good balance, but I think it's a, it's a good team this this season. Harvey, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much for your time. Uh, thanks to everyone who's checked out this episode of the podcast with Harvey Sinclair here in Venezia. And if you've not, please like and subscribe. Cheers. I'd just like to thank absolutely everyone who has listened to this episode of the podcast. As I said previously, please go back and listen to some old episodes. I'm sure there'll be some in there that you've liked, especially if you're a football fan. Uh, We have some previous episodes with football players in there as well. And just once again, thanks very much to everyone who has listened to the podcast this year. I'm sure that next year is going to be even bigger and better. We'll continue to grow and we'll continue to have some fantastic guests on there. Thanks very much. Cheers. Thank you.